Charisma. Charisma squirmed in the seat from her butt stinging and leaned against the Cadillac door to get as far as possible from the preacher. The lilt of his voice left no doubt she had often heard it before. She avoided his eyes but watched his hands. The preacher tugged the monogrammed cuff of his left sleeve, then extended his arm over the steering wheel. He snapped his head to the side to make his neck crack, reminding her of the stepfather she had run away from. Sweat spots showed through the preacher's starched blue shirt for the 10 minutes they'd spent outside the car under a cloudless blue summer sky. His hair was black and slicked back, too black to be natural, she thought. Not a strand out of place. He kept his eyes straight ahead, ignoring the expanse of mile after mile of flat fields, but placed his right hand on the worn leather Bible between them on the white leather seats. She waited silently. Finally, he cleared his throat. Ladies don't hitchhike, he said without looking over at her. How old are you? She looked at his pristine nails tapping the Bible. A man with a pedicure. She'd never seen a man who cared for the appearance of his hands. She tried to remember if she'd ever seen her boyfriend's nails when they were not black from engine grease. I'm 18, she said, since her birthday was a month away, and she had been saying she was 18 for two years now anyway. I should just put you out right here, he said. She watched the speedometer and saw that he didn't slow down. His lips moved, but little sound came out. She realized he was praying, Get thee behind me, Satan, he mumbled, his eyes still ahead. After several minutes, she said, You hurt me, you know. She waited, but all he did was grip the Bible tightly. The tart smell of diesel blew from the air conditioner vents as they passed a tractor trailer rig loaded with soybeans. It ain't right what you've done. I said no. I said I just wanted to ride home from town. You're a filthy man. Without looking, the preacher swung his right arm, striking her in the mouth with the back of the Bible. You're the goddamn devil in this car, she yelled, reaching up to feel her bottom lip swelling. She ran her tongue along the inside of her lip and tasted the blood. What you done was wrong, and beating on me now don't make it right no more than the way you put that belt across my ass did. I bet that's the only way you get excited, ain't it? He jerked his head around to look at her, his eyes swollen and red and his look so fierce. She felt her breath catch in her throat like dust. God will strike you down, you evil little slut. Don't you use the Lord's name in vain in my car. You're the devil's temptress that made this happen. I didn't want that shit you done, she said, lowering her voice. I told you no. I never said nothing but no. Charisma stared ahead, saying nothing for a long time. The car slowed. She looked down at the preacher's brightly polished black wingtips, expensive shoes, not like her dirty white tennis shoes from Dollar General or her boyfriend's scuffed boots that he had worn every day since they met. I'm stopping right now and you can get your slutty little self out of my car. I wouldn't do that if I was you. I know who you are, preacher. I recognize your voice from the radio. Heard you since I was a kid and I got your tag number right up here, she said, softly pointing to her temple. I don't think you want people to know what you've done to me. How you hurt me, all I wanted was a ride. Out the side window, the sunset formed long red streaks above the flat Mississippi Delta horizon. She could not ignore its beauty, preacher or not. Her daddy had made sure of that before he died. Every Sunday after church, during the harvest season, He'd take her driving down the parched dirt roads between the cotton fields he called God's Back 40. The radio of some Memphis station would be turned down low as background while her daddy pointed out the fields he'd worked. The stubby bean fields out her window today had been harvested. A foamy sea of cotton tops ran for thousands of acres on both sides of the road, ready for the picker. She wondered if her daddy had cut these very fields before his truck flipped over that early morning leaving her with no daddy when she was only 13. She saw the jaw muscles working on the preacher's face when he looked over at her. She stared at him as his eyes scanned from her long blonde hair down the front of her tight t-shirt and to her thighs, only half covered by the blue jean skirt. Blood rushed to her face as his gaze lingered on her long dirty fingernails. She closed her fists so her nails didn't show. You ain't the first man to force me, she said. That don't make it right. 
You got to make it right. After a minute of silence, he asked, What do you mean, make it right? I don't know. I got a baby at home, and you're a man of the cloth. Why don't you make sure my baby's got food on the table? The tires roared like a distant crowd at a high school football game as the preacher turned sharply into the diner's gravel parking lot. She jerked the door open and stepped out, slamming the door behind her. The tires spun gravel backwards for a dozen feet as the car sped out onto Highway 61. She walked slowly into the 61 diner after watching the car disappear north. The smell of cigarettes and brewing coffee filled the room. She sat at the first booth. Greasy dishes, wadded napkins, and tiny crust from something fried littered the red formica table. She shoved aside a plate smeared with ketchup. The seat felt warm from a large woman in tight black stretch pants now standing in line to pay. Charisma leaned forward on her elbows on the table to put her face in her hands. Within seconds, the young man whose trailer she had shared for nearly a year slid into the booth across from her and pushed back the long, greasy locks of blonde hair from his face. How much did you get, Char? He asked in a whisper, looking around. It's $400, but I got to have some of it for groceries and formula. You can't be spending it all on your damn Camaro.